Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. I just finished uh, filming up, you know, that's what I do most of the days is filming, talking to my online classes and stuff. And I just finished filming this one, the cute little least is he's a least chipmunk. And uh, I got the picture from uh, Adobe um, uh, stock photos. And I thought, oh, we're gonna paint him up. What we're gonna do in this class is we are painting him four different ways. We're gonna paint him a watercolor. We're gonna paint him following Premier Coup, which is that one right there, the technique called Premier Coup. We're gonna do a texturized uh, version of it, which is very popular in today's wildlife painters. And then we're gonna do a very uh, a softer, uh, more of a blended up, um, uh, a la prima type look to it. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So that's the first one I just did. And it took just about 45 minutes for me to paint as I was talking through the color layers. One of the things I like to do is answer questions and stuff. So as we're doing some of these other challenges and stuff there, I get all these other questions. And Jeannie down in Florida, she wrote me and uh, wrote me an email and said, you know, what she's having a hard time differentiating between the water and the extender. Uh, when she's talking about drying time and talking about water as a solvent. And here I am putting water on and blending something back through with the solvent blending and water dries faster than extender. So how can that happen? So I can understand the confusion. Okay, I understand that confusion. So I thought I would explain that to you, but let's do it in a painting. Let's have some fun and do it in a painting because I had another lady that asked me she'd like to see lilac. So I'm going to paint you some lilacs and roses and we're going to answer some of these questions along the way. See if I can bring it at you a little bit different to help you explain the difference between water and extender and what and how those uh, two different techniques okay so what I have is just a regular board this is uh, and I, I gave this see this is what I did first is I, I put on white this is actually some of our light primers our, our canvas prep medium I put it on with a big sponge and I do this and uh, onto my hardboard this is a regular piece of hardboard and then I gave it a coat of medium white over the top of it and sanded back through so the white comes through. I like to just try all different kinds of stuff because you know what? Painting's fun and it should be fun and you should try all different kinds of stuff, you know. So I got that for a background. So now I'm going to go in and we're going to paint some flowers. This is uh, This board is 10 inches this way and it's probably around... 18, 16 maybe inches this way. It's a, it's a pretty good size board. It's a little end cut one I thought it would be kind of nice. And since we do our own framing here in the gallery and stuff, so I can have any, I get to have any size board I want, but you'd probably want to pick one that would uh, work on a frame for you. Let's get going, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to show you some of the differences between using water and using extender. This is this is extender here. Now, extender dr slows down the drying time of the paint, okay? Slows down the drying time of the paint. Uh, it is not a solvent. It will not reconstitute the paint, so we'll get into that. All right, first thing I'm going to do is put on some background color, and I'm going to, we're going to make lilacs, so I like the, the purpley kind of lilacs, and so we'll just mix some of these colors up here. We'll go lighter here. We'll make their violets. Oh, so my palette here. Well, this is my Hansa yellow, yellow oxide, naphtha red light, burnt sienna, pine green, phthalo blue. This is red violet, quinacridone violet, and white. This is my three quarter inch fusion brush. I always like to kind of start out with that. Make myself a light color. I like this light color to be about the value of the background that I have here. Okay, and I like it on the, a little bit more to the violet side. I can soften this, gray it, it'll soften it, warm it. You can see that, see the difference, the change in tone? It takes the edge of the harshness of that, um, of that uh, uh, violet itself off just a bit, softens it, harmonizes it. A little bit of yellow. And then I'm just adding some water here. And I'm just going to, let's see. Let's put a rose like right in here. We'll put some, I'm just gonna spray some of the wonderful uh, um, lilacs out through here like this. So I get a nice soft, some background movement here. This is just so much fun. And I then I'll just soften that out a bit like that. Let's work this for just a minute. Okay, and um, let's take a bit more red into that, a bit more of our red violet actually into that, darken that down, a little more blue, 
just a bit of water. Let's come in and touch some of that in and touch some of that in here, over here. That's great. Into there. Let's touch a bit more. Now, sometimes I'll work this wet into wet. Right now I'm working it dry. Um, I'm letting it dry with just water. Sometimes I work this wet into wet, but majority of this is gonna cover up with, uh, as I start to do the flowers themselves. So I'm not worried about blending or too much of the softening. I like to do what I call shear like this, shear it off. That leaves movement, interest, uh, to the paint. It doesn't blend it out smooth. I don't like the, you know, the, I like the power of color and movement in my paintings. And that is very popular today in the contemporary painters. And so I like to, um, I like to keep that going. And I'm just going to push a little bit of that. So I shear stuff off like that. Okay. All right. Let's go just a bit blue now. Just a bit more blue. And we'll hit a few areas of that in just like you know what you're doing there we'll hit that okay now let's work some greens in we'll just take our greens right into here and some burnt sienna pine green burnt sienna my big three-quarter brush we can even add some of this nice violet in there model that up let's get some greens going through here push that right out into these colors okay push that around here, there, get some of this nice color, nice. Sometimes I use my paper towel. Sometimes I put a little water into it. Now, so w what's the difference, okay? If, if I'm looking at this and this is, some of this is dried up here, okay? Uh, some of it's dry. Okay, so you're going to put extender. What does extender do? Extender slows down the drying time, but extender will not reconstitute the color you see it doesn't pick that up it's not blending that again because that's already dry extender cannot reconstitute bring the color back when it's dry got a little green from my finger right there but water can for the for several hours after the acrylic dries before the acrylic cures when the, there's a process we call curing when this is cured water won't affect it anymore but for several hours this paint doesn't cure for a long time. And for several hours, you can take water. So this is water, just this, just water. And it will reconstitute the paint immediately. Do you see the difference? Okay, so if I come over here, kind of clean finger, and I put extender over here, and I run that through like that, it won't reconstitute the paint. But if I add just a tiny bit of water, boom, there it is right there, reconstitute, the paint's moving again. And you can mix the two together. Let's say like I just did this right now. I put water and extender together. The water reconstitutes it. The extender mixes up. Now that's going to stay wet for a while. So if I want to come in here and smooth this off, extender will not smooth that off because that's pretty dry. So I go to water. And water is the solvent. Water dissolves the paint until... The paint is cured. Once the paint is cured, and that takes several hours, water won't do that anymore. Nothing will move the paint when it's finally cured. So if you want to move the paint around, you can move the paint around now with water. You, while it's wet, you can add extender into it, and that'll stay wet for a while. But you need water to reconstitute it because it's the solvent. It's what dissolves it. And the uh, extender, the extender does not. So down here where it's dry, see, I can, it, if I put extender in to begin with, it wouldn't, it would still be wet. But, but after it's dry, extender won't work. See, extender does not work anymore. But a tiny drip of water under your finger will work very fast, very quickly and soften all of that out. Now you have extender and water and you can mix them together, yes. You can mix the two together. One is a solvent, one is, one affects the drying time, one is a solvent. And so it, uh, but once the, the drying is done, extender won't do anything more to it, towards the paint. Okay, so let's, 
now that we've got all this playing going on here, I'm going to take a little water. It's your solvent, right? I'm going to take a little water and I mean, on my paper towel, and I'll just back out some of this green and stuff that's right here and we'll put out because water is my solvent. So I'm taking the acrylic back out. Now, this does not work with every single acrylic paint out there because every single acrylic paint is different. And like I said, I've worked for four paint companies, uh, was the chemist and colorist on those, on those, and I designed some paint that dries really fast, hard, fast, quickly, so that you can recoat it without it picking back up again. There's, and those have very specific purposes. You know, paint companies make, uh, you know, products for what they think the majority of their market likes. I paint with techniques with the heritage that are developed. These techniques are developed for the heritage and what I do. Not all acrylics are going to be able to do it. You're going to have to test. I don't know. You're going to have to test because I know paint manufacturers make paint all different. So, and this is what I like. I can take the solvent here and just clean up your palette. So you have a solvent and you have an extender. Water is your solvent. Extender changes your drying time. Let's come in and let's paint some pretty soft yellow roses. We'll put a bit of that, of that violet into that. See how it softens that down? That's kind of pretty. I'm going to stay with my big brush here for a second and just put in a soft yellow base into this rose. Let's drop maybe another one right down in here and we're going to have, we'll put something maybe back here. We'll have some of these nice lilacs coming all down through here as well. So pretty, pretty fun stuff. All right, so I'm going to go over to my eight, sometimes ten, sometimes eight. I like them all. I like them. I'm going to take some of this violet and just push that right into the rose. Some of this nice violet colors, push those right into my rows. And I do this for harmony, working of color and harmony. I like to paint all kinds of ways. There's not just one way I paint. I follow all different kinds of ways of painting. And it's like a, on the little least chipmunk I just did, I used a portrait. I used a 19th century portrait technique on to paint that chipmunk. And I like that as well. But my some of my online classes were heading over to, to understanding portraits, and so we have to understand brush movement. So here I'm just building, right? Building, building. You've got your sizes of your rows. I'm building a little more color, a little bit thicker color right out here, right into the front where I want, okay? Then we'll come in, and uh, let's go with a softer violet here first. Violet, a little bit of burnt sienna into this, right into my yellows. So I'm not going to go real dark. Sometimes you see me, I usually go a couple values darker. We break the rose up into its three circles, like I've showed you many times, and we did all those challenges. I lift the pressure, small movements, small movements. You can even take a bit of that violet back there and soften that. Don't be afraid to just hit a color. It's just a board and a bit of paint. Have some fun, try some things. The most important shape on the rose is the bowl, the bowl shadow. That is what gives you its shape. So I wanna make sure I see a nice, cool bowl shadow back over here, and I'm gonna push those together. I love the yellow oxide and that violet together. The quinacridone violet and the yellow oxide makes these beautiful peach colors. And um, they're really pretty in, into a rose. And so we'll put some of that. Let's put some of this violet down here. And I paint really fast. You know, when, I'm, when I uh, am working an a la prima or something, I paint really, really fast, as fast as I can. And it takes, it takes confidence to get that. And I know in that... Um, I know a lot of you write to me and say, oh, you're not that, that fast. That's okay. That comes with time. That You don't have to be this, this fast. Like I always say, I pause really well. You just put me on pause and wait. and uh, But don't play with it too much. That's our goal is we don't want to play. So now I have a nice medium color. I've pushed up and around. I've 
set the bowl, set the bowl here. I'm going to darken now this, and I'm going to put just a touch of that yellow oxide in it to soften. See how it just immediately grays down, softens down the harshness of the red violet for this particular painting. And I'll push some of that down here as a deep shadow. And you have to ask yourself, I mean, you're, this is your composition. You have to ask yourself now for contrast, are you going to put any of that in this one or that one? Maybe a little bit of it into this one, maybe none of it back into that one. So this keeps this flower here as the center of interest into my, my flower design. Now I'm going to rinse that color out. I'm going to go back to my yellow oxide, a little bit of this of uh, quinacridone in it. it. makes a nice, beautiful, soft... I'm going to go with the soft, soft yellow color here. So a lot of white and a soft yellow. And I'm going to push that right down here onto that edge and pull down to pull down a bit to start to set the bowl. Now I'll lift the pressure. Whatever I do, I want my brush moving in this circular motion like this to set up the, mo the, the circular movement of the bowl. I'll pick up just a little more color, maybe a bit more yellow oxide in it here, and some of that violet, so it's not quite as light on this side. So I'm going to set the light in on the top up here, like that. Okay, and sometimes, like I just took my finger and drug there, I do that sometimes when I feel like I've created too much of a V, and I'll reset it like a second layer or a second petal or something there, so it's not quite so much of a V. And so sometimes I do that with my finger, force myself to change it a bit here. And, you know, it all depends on what you feel that day. How are you going to do it? Try new things. Let's pick up a little more yellow, a little more violet, a little more white. Build a softer, light color right up into the front. Let's come just a bit more yellow and light. Let's come out and do a nice light petal right out here. Nice reach, pull in. These are just like the roses that I showed you here on the 30-day roses. So those of you that painted through that should be able to bust this rose out pretty quick. So we did that 30-day rose challenge. It's still there for those of you just joining our channel and stuff. So you can paint that. Now as you come around this side, you got to think shadow. So I'll go over here towards my cooler, more shadow colors. And we'll, let's even put a bit of burnt sienna in some of that. That will just reduce, that won't, you know, it, it, it softens down the violet without lightening it up too much like the yellow oxide, which is lighter. So we'll push some of that around, okay? Now that's really wet, I'm gonna let it dry up a minute because it's really wet. When I start building a lot of paint, I don't like to paint because every time I touch something, see, if I come in here and I make a light stroke like this, and I touch it on there, and then I go to move it, if I move it too much, my light stroke, it just goes everywhere because there's too much paint. And so I like to let it dry up, let it tack up a bit. And so I'll go work on something else for just a minute while that starts to dry up a bit. That's how I like to paint. I am not a blender. I don't like to blend. I like tone painting. I mix tones, and uh, that's how I paint with acrylics. Now, you can put in extenders and blend, but you know, for and I did that for years. I was an oil painter for years, and it just all blends together with me. And so I started painting this way, and I like this. So I'll pull in. I'm just going to do a simple simple little idea of a bud and stuff out here or open or, or a rose bud here and keep it simple a little more light right up into the front keep my shapes and my movements simple here sometimes i'll leave them really rough looking as a more of a contemporary look and I'm, and i always think oh geez you know that's really kind of rough and they always sell really well for me so it's kind of like I never paint what I like, I paint what people like. Here we go, just a bit different here. Um, and I'm gonna reset that center, not so much red violet there. Let's just reset that around here for a second. 
and drop another part of that bud over here. It got a little bit lopsided, just a bit. So let's just drop some of that over here. And see, I just like that. I can just, just reset this whole flower shape again. Just by putting in the shadow again. Just going through my steps again. Working through the steps again. And I'll just reset that flower. That's a better shape for it. You could reset that center again, but that's not too bad. For it. Now this is starting to tack up, so this is good. You can always tell, you know, here looking at it the sideways there, you can see it's a little wet right there. Rest of it's kind of dried up a bit. That's enough for me to work on. I'll put a little yellow, some of my nice soft colors here. Let's build that up. Now you see, see that stroke sits and I can push it a little bit and it doesn't go everywhere. I can build up another lighter front one right there like that that's kind of fun you can lift off now if I if I want this to stay really wet I add extender but you see I'm wanting it to dry so that's why you don't see me add extender to it there are certain times I add extender most of the time it's to let the color slide quite a bit I like them to slide but um, I don't do it very much to blend or to keep it wet anymore. So I pull it just like that, pull the light. Let's pull the light here. I'm trying to make a petal. See, I'm trying to make a petal that crosses here so they don't line up with each other. So this one crosses these two here. That makes it look pretty. And then I'll push. Now, this is pretty much dry in here, see? And I can put extender on there, it won't work. So I do what I call solvent blend. If I want to soften, now I really don't. I like that kind of movement, but I want to show you here. So I'll take a bit of my nice dirty finger. It's got the chipmunk on it from just a few minutes ago. It's got, you know, dirty stuff, but I'll just push this right in here. Now see the water, pick it up, see? The water picks it up and moves it really nice. So if you're in... Like Jeannie, you were saying, you know, if I was telling her, if you're in an area and it's drying really fast on you, go ahead and let it dry up a bit. Then come back and push that through. And I always say you can also use a mister bottle, mist the surface, and then just push it for a little bit. It'll, it'll move on you like that for a couple hours. And uh, it all depends on humidity and how dry it is outside. Sometimes you might only have an hour, but it's going to move on you. I, and it, you're going to be able to do that. That's called solvent. So if I can't do it with extender, go ahead, work on it with extender as long as you can. Let it dry up a bit and then switch over to doing it with a solvent. And it always works. Everybody, and that's, that's one of the things that I wanted to do when we started designing the Heritage Paint was to make it very versatile that you, every artist can use it a little different depending on what mediums you add to it and how you're going about, you know, um, setting up or adding water or not. There's just so many variations. Now I'm going to build a little more white right up into the front. Pull down everything, always, right guys? We always got to always gotta find that bowl. So I'm, I'm curving this stuff down because everything flows off of that bowl. So it's got to come down to that bowl. And sometimes I'll just put some pink. Now this is... This is getting dry here, so extender won't do anything to it once it dries. So I'll add water right here and I'll reconstitute the paint right on my palette, see? And I'm just going to push some of that pink right along the bottom of the bowl here, of the, this one. Just wipe my brush lightly. Just lift off here like that. That's kind of pretty. I might take just the edge of that with that corner. You saw me do this in the challenges challenges here this is our thing you know and this is the and just use what's called the petal edging technique but this is what I like I, I love I love the questions because your questions make me a better teacher where I can explain it and see where everybody's at and I can come back and maybe say it or, or say it a different way or show it a little different way because we're all different. We all learn a little different. But see how I can use that edge and just draw that in? And then if I want to soften anything in there, yeah, you can do it with a standard. If it's dry at all, just take a little bit of water on your brush. And the soft fusion brush is designed to do just this. 
just wash it across. See, there's once, twice, and see, that's that's pretty blended in there. I don't want to blend any more than that. I'll lose the beauty of my flower. But I can take a light edge like this, put it right here on the edge of this petal here, and I can run some water right there, or I can take a little water right into this pink that's right here and just run that right back through here like this to put a bit of shadow on that. Build the flower the way I want. So while the paint is wet, I can use extender. Once the paint dries, I have to switch over. If I want to build something, I should switch over to water and use water as a solvent to reconstitute. So let's push some of that in. So see, this is dry back here. You can hear me rub. It's dry, right? And so if I want to put a light color, say, right into here, now I want to bring those together. I can't blend that anymore with the stender because the paint underneath there is dry. So I just take some water. I'll push some water right there. Now I can use my finger and push the two together really nice. Soften them out, blend them out, do whatever I want to do. Um, you know, that's all up to you. Now, what what does it take? What does it take to blend like that? Paint. You have to, that's the one thing, is you have to make sure you're using enough paint. And acrylic painters usually paint a little bit thin. So you got to learn how to uh, start painting with a little bit more paint. Because then you have more stuff there to do fun techniques with. So learn to start using more paint. And the technique works better for you. Let's just put some of this, restate some of this, push this right around. See, all that's wet again because I had the water in there, the solvent, reactivating the color. It's just so much fun. Now, are you going to be able to do that tomorrow morning? No. Uh-uh. It's all going to be cured up. Once it's cured, water will not affect it anymore. So you'll have a few hours to do fun stuff like that. Then it's going to cure. Then it's going to dry up. And you're going to like it because you're not going to be able to manipulate it anymore. Here, we'll push that up over there. We'll just make some soft, pinky little ideas of petals and movements out over here. Don't want to get... I want all of the lights, really, of what's going on with the flower to be over onto the other sides there. We'll put a few light... A little bit of this light pink over here just a bit find that bowl just always find that bowl let that bowl sit in there and that makes your that makes your rose a little bit of yellow and that light here push in and out I'm just watching just how close I want to bring these petals down to these front petals so and every rose I do a little different just going to lighten these up a bit more. Here, like that. And let's take a final bull strike right there. Nice, thick paint. I like that. Just get some of that paint on there. Just like that. So that's kind of pretty. Let's do a real quick yellow. Now see, this is dry, right? This is dry, and this dried, what, 10 minutes ago or so? And let me rinse this out real good in my dirty water. Um, I'll put some water over this, okay? And then I'm just going to push. See? There it is. I'll blend it all up. So you have time. You have time. But extender will not do it. Extender will not do it. Let's just come in. Push on a little bit here. We'll push on a bit of the outside reaching petals. We'll go pretty quick here. And show you that. Let's get a little bit quinacridone, some color into this. We're going to keep this one really soft. And see, I like, I'll approach them a little differently so that they, they stay a little different from each other. They don't have to be the same kind of roses. You know, many times I'll paint even two different varieties of roses in a composition. Of course, that's, 
that's you know gives interest let's just drop this around yep I don't know if you can hear that but there is a big thunderstorm coming <laughs> which means I'm gonna paint really fast here because we're gonna have to shut the cameras down all the electronics here pretty quick it's coming yeah it's uh Not too smart to run the electronics during the thunderstorm here, so we'll have to stop pretty soon. But I'm going to get to these lilacs. We're going to do it. Whoa! That's really bright. And you can see that's really bright because I didn't have any of that yellow in there. Start thinking about that thunderstorm that's coming. And there we go. A little bit of that pink there on the side. See, that's just kind of, kind of pretty. Now, we can revisit that. You know, we can come back and add a... Don't touch that, Hansa. We can come back and add some more. I think I'll add just a bit more of the light right up here. Just leave that rose kind of soft. Let's go into... Let's go in and paint some pretty lilacs right up in through here. So what I'm going to do is take down some of the colors that I used here before. And this is where you can, like, add some extender into it to uh, get, keep some of them wet. You already got this beautiful... You know, you've already got this beautiful modeling of color out there. Let's start imagining, you know, little models, little flowers, movements like this through that. Just movement. And that's what I do a lot, guys, is I paint for movement. I don't paint individual flowers yet. I only put on a few flowers. What I'm painting for is the movement that I want this area to have just the fun movement and I'll look for color variations some areas have a bit more we'll let some of these violets see go brighter than what that violet is in the rose so that they'll have some power up against the rose okay. let's take some of this so blues and violets just put some soft we'll have some soft colors there I hit a little bit of white. It's okay. You can even grab some of this yellows and push those in there. This is just the first soft looks of it, right? Let's go a little bit more violet, maybe a touch of blue. This is a little deeper, darker, uh, more contrast color that can come in real close to that rose, our main rose. And see, I'm just like Xing and movement here. That's all I'm doing. And you can put a little extender in that. I like that because it makes it move a bit. Push that color and that allows you to push and shear off and slide the color a bit. You can use that for like negative painting back here to pick up the edge of that rose a bit there. That's kind of pretty here let's use just a bit of that right here to set that see that's called negative painting so I actually paint the edge of the rose not with the light petal but with the dark of the background I show that a lot in my classes and stuff and we did some of that in the 30-day roses as well and we'll push some of that in now let's We'll come over here towards our blues as well. Let's go up a value light now. So I'll take both of my violets here. Let's lighten up a bit here. Okay. And we will, I want it a little bit lighter than what you see in that area. So pretty close right there. And this is where you start to make little flowers or just maybe a petal or two of some of those flowers shift over to some blues make some different colors here get some movements of some blues through there so that they're all a little different see you just get a little bit of that movement there and of course you can make them smaller you know smaller little flowers you know and this or you can make them a little bit larger sometimes i make the lilacs really small sometimes I make them bigger it just changes the sizes of your roses here so sometimes I give them more power like that and I end up painting them several times so here I may come back and start to lighten up and and start to uh, shape up some of the petals a bit sometimes I'll break their edges but 
paint them with a little bit more definition. So I might leave those right there and make a lighter one right up here on top of all of those right there. And uh, that just changes everything. So, and sometimes I'll just make light colors, light touches. They're really kind of fun. There's all different kinds of ways to do that. Let's go down here. push some right into here. Now when I'm leaving the the composition here, see some of these out here I just might just do lights. But as I'm leaving the composition, I just I get really casual and may not even have complete flower shapes out here. We'll just put out some pretty flowers. Here, let's put a few other lighter ones. And I'll just sometimes just push those around. Get some blues in there. Get some different colors. The blues are a little, you know, the blue and that and that light is really cool. Really cool looking. And and I'll build them, and sometimes I'll use, you know. Like I say, I use small little brushes, make little marks like this, just marks down. You know, I do that pet it, you know, get the the light mark over the dark field. It just looks wonderful. Push, you know, add some color and push it around a bit. There. Now, really heavy on those, so I'm going to take some of it back down now with some of my pine green and burnt sienna. And I'll start pushing some of this a little further back. Take some of it, some of this color. Let's add a little extender. You could add some yellows, a little bit of your violets into that green. That just gives you nice harmony. And let's just pull some of this right in like this. Some of this green, see, calms down and pushes back some of these little violets, see? And gives you a better bouquet. So we'll add some of that green here. It'll push away some of these violets. You can, um, I like that pine green and burnt sienna. It's such a pretty color, especially on like this palette here. You can uh, use this to, I mean, so if I come in here and push this green all the way around, you see it really lightens up the whole feel of those violets here. but. You can come out and um, make some, let's put a soft, let's put some of that violet into this, get a softer color here. And you can put in some, you know how I like to shape some leaves up every once in a while. So you can, uh, especially on that outside, like to shape some of the leaf and just rub it with my finger to take some of the color off here. I like that as well. Let's put a few leaf shapes right up here. So a few outside leaves are really sometimes kind of nice to have that shape if you're going to use them really casual on the inside just to see the leaves every once in a while. Sometimes just use a casual mark here. Just push some of that color around. You know we might um, use a little bit more burnt sienna and pine green here and Make a little darker or lighter leaf in some areas. Here, a little bit more contrast. So see, as I add more paint, it's adding more contrast. And we can add some more greens. This is very, um, I want to say when you paint like this, this is very contemporary look to your composition. You cross these colors and, you know, push little marks, movement marks and stuff. Very, that just is fun. Do the little brush dance, I call it. Here, out. You can take some of that out. You know, there's one thing that uh, I started doing in some paintings here. Now, you know, we painted that rose up there quite a bit ago, but you take some water on your finger and you push like this and you blur that back edge of that rose a bit. This is... Uh, a very contemporary look as well but see I can blur right back to the top up there take out 
a little bit to move those colors together. It's a very contemporary look. Now, and if you take out too much, and try. I mean, shoot, it's just a little paint and a brush. And if you take out too much, then go back and reset a little bit, but leave some of that movement. And you get some very beautiful contemporary looks to your to your flowers and to your roses and stuff, you know. Get some color. Try that, you know, just use that water, but but that does not that does not work with all acrylics. It all depends on your acrylic because some companies design their paints to dry. They increase the vinyl in it and they causes your paints to dry harder faster so that you can recoat and do layering techniques and stuff like that easier. So it all depends. So it, you know, every company makes theirs a little different from each other to do different things what they think their customers want to do. So you just have to test yours. I'm going to push this on here and just push and pick up some of that green and stuff there because I have a little water on my fingers still. I'll pick up that green right there and make that a nice trans transparent looking petal there, see? Maybe a, a bit darker right into that center. Let's put a little bit of yellow in there. We'll add just a touch of that red violet there. Reset that dark center. Maybe uh, a little bit right here. And since that's all dry, I'll just take a damp brush right here, push that in, and just push and soften that just a bit by using the uh, solvent part of the paint. Let's, let's increase the red right into here. See, now, so I put that on. Of course, that rose is dry right there, so I'll add some water right across the surface here. And you can already see it starting to pick up. It picks up pretty quick. And it works really well like that because I got a lot of paint down there. That's why it works. If yours doesn't work and it pulls a hole in it, you don't have enough paint. It's pulling a hole because it's going all the way to the bottom of the, to the board because there's not enough paint there. So you got to get enough paint in. Let's take some yellow oxide, a little bit of our Hansa. Let's just add little ideas of yellow centers here to our lilacs. Just tap them off just a bit so they're softer. Don't look like little dots there. A little softer. And I think I'm going to go... A little lighter green right in here. Push that around. I like to try different things. Get some different colors going there. And uh, that's good. I'm going to restate that outside yellow, light yellow, some of this violet here. Soften it. More white. Let's edge that up here. Come back in here and push this petal out a little further right over the edge of that green. Why? So I can push and get that transparent look right there. We'll push just a little bit more on that edge. Get that nice transparent look to the edge of that petal. A little more yellow right here. Let's lighten up this petal one more time. So see, I come back and restate. I always believe in working on your main rows towards the last, again, I call it, revisit your main center of interest, the queen of the roses, the queen of your composition. She wants to be the boss. So I always come back and make sure I see her completely the way she needs to be in that composition. So that's kind of pretty, that sitting out there. Um, Let's put a little bit of light, like this is a back top petal here. And that's real dry right there, so I'm going to take a little water. Rinse my brush, take a little bit of water, the solvent, put that on there. Sometimes you have to wait for just a second, depending on how long it's been there, and then just push. And then I'll blend that all together, soften that all in there. Just like that, we'll get a nice little movement look there. Let's put another one right in there. That's kind of nice. There, like that. 
very, very different. Now, you, know, you can come back and you can say, okay, you know, maybe I uh, need to soften some areas back. You can always take your damp paper towel and come back and just work some of the areas. This is one of the things I like to do. Work some of the colors through, blur out some areas, work them around. You know, you can always do this kind of stuff and uh, find the look that you like. Let's put a little bit of that violets coming back out there. Maybe a little bit of an idea of a few out here just fading away there on that side. I do like that contrast coming right there into the center like that. I always like to give a few stems too. I like the uh, burnt sienna and the pine green, mostly burnt sienna for a stem. I like the look of stems. They're kind of like a movement and an anchor at the same time in the design. And uh, so sometimes I'll add them around, around the painting a bit. Some extra movements, extra little touches there. There you go. That's a nice little, quick little uh, rose. Now, it's like I say, you can go in and if you want to make more detail to your violets, go to a smaller brush too. You can go to a smaller brush, work, a, a, work some more lights and darks and violets and stuff, colors here. Find some that you like, but go to a smaller brush and work a little bit more detail here with some of them. And, uh, you know, these are, are the violets and, and work your uh, lilacs, you know, with just a bit more detail, a little bit more going on. You know, you can make some larger, some smaller. You can make them really small. You know, it all depends on the size of the roses that you have and you know, what you're working with. So here, just a smaller little number. This is a six, I'm working a six. Makes pretty, the six size here makes a nice size for the little petals of the of the uh, lilacs and stuff here. But vary the colors, you know, that's what makes them pretty. Get some more of the blue side or add some blue right to some of yours. Push those colors around, get those little color marks and movements out here. That's what makes it pretty. Okay. Thanks for joining me. And like I say, you know, hopefully you hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a comment and stuff if something you want to see. Um, I still have to do glass vase and one that you know, that have asked for the glass vase. And so I'm going to do a glass vase and, and I think I'm going to set that, I'm going to set that up for next week. And, um, it, uh, is I'm going to do, I'm actually going to combine some photography, show you what I did, how to set the light source, how to paint a glass vase. Glass is something I used to paint a lot and teach a lot of. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun to paint that with you guys. We'll paint it pure acrylic. And I'll show you how to do that, you know, getting that tonal control into painting glass. It's actually a lot easier than you're probably thinking. Just like making transparent petals. You know, glass and, and everything. I learned, I did a lot of reading of John Singer Sargent and what he said about painting transparency. And it, it's just fantastic. That's one of the things I'm teaching right now in my online classes uh, is some of his philosophies. And um, it's just absolutely fantastic. But uh, I'll, I'll, we'll get into that next week or so. So please hit the subscribe button. Please uh, uh, leave some comments and and. You know, like the video, that helps us with the distribution and stuff. And if there's anything that you want to see, just let me know. We'll get down to it. Just remember here with this one, right? Right? There's water and there's solvent. Water does dry faster, okay, than the extender. The extender's made to stay wet for a long time. But once the extender's dry, you then, have, if you want to pick up the paint and move it again, you got to use a solvent, just like you do anything. You got to dissolve it a little bit and get it moving, okay? And so that's what water can do. So I work them back and forth. I know if it's dry, I need to move over to water. If it's if it's wet and I want to keep it wet, I add extender. Does that make sense? But then as soon as it dries, if it's if it's a little wet or a little tacky, you can mix up extender into it. But once it's dry, you need water, okay? They're fun techniques, a lot of different variations of them. And uh, I'll see you on the next one, okay? Thanks for joining me. Okay, see you later. See you later.